Hello everyone. So anyways, continuing on with a lot of our uh, project that we got going on, people often ask which, is, which one is better, webmail or an email client. It really depends on your personal preference. I find that the older generation tends to like an email client, uh, such as Outlook, Windows Live, and so on and so forth. And the newer generation has transitioned over to webmail such as Yahoo, Gmail, and so on and so forth, relatively easily. It's a matter of personal preference. It is also a matter of what you're going to use it for. For example, and this is really important if you're self-employed or a business owner, you may need these functions. So let's open up Gmail here. What you can see here is just your basic Gmail and you can compose your emails da, 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 da. you've got all of your formatting tools down here in dead bullet marks bold italic these are all really really nice you can do your attachments web links the nice thing about gmail yahoo aol you could do emojis most email clients will not let you do emojis you can manually type them in if you know what they are but most email clients will not let you do emojis because most email clients nowadays are like I said are the, is really designed for the business world so Outlook is usually more for an office uh, and it usually comes with the Microsoft Office package live mail has been since then retired EM client uh, which is one we recommend to a lot of business people uh, a really good email alternative to Outlook and it's cheap um, again doesn't support emojis in this particular fashion um, you can manually insert them but it doesn't have a nice little button to this so webmail is nice because you can get it on your phone uh, you can do that with outlook now too but you can you know the advantage of webmail is your emails are in the cloud if you lose your phone if your computer dies you still have all of your emails that you have always had um, and you don't lose your contacts. <clears throat> so that's the advantage of a webmail system such as Gmail. The advantage to Outlook and other programs similar to it, such as Thunderbird or um, what's the other one, EM Client, the advantage to this is it has more business related functionality. One of the important things that these email clients provide, which you don't really need them anymore in this day and age, but if you are in the medical field, if you are in the legal professional areas, it's nice to have these functionalities as a way of covering your butt. When you're sending an email on Outlook or any of the other email clients, usually somewhere in the menu option, is this little tool here request a delivery receipt now this is the equivalent to the postal service or any other mail delivery service where you put the green card on it the package gets to go where it's going they sign for it and they send you a receipt back that's what that delivery request does is the email gets to where it's going it asks for the recipient to acknowledge that the email has been received and it sends you a receipt back Again, really important for those who are in like the medical profession and the legal profession where they're communicating with outside agencies, uh, courts, um, the Department of Health and Human Services, um, anything like that where there's a critical attachment to it. So you turn on this and you can guarantee this has been delivered. Um, if you never get this delivery notice back, then the person you sent it to never received it and the email is lost into the ether back in the days of old that was a common problem in this day and age not so much if an email you send an email today and if it's not to your destination in about five minutes it never got there resend it but like i said for those two areas that i could think of in in general the medical profession the legal profession delivery receipts is a good way of covering your butt read request <sighs> this is an acknowledgement from recipient that they've not only received it but they actually read it <laughs> and it's funny you get that you have to reply to this read request before you read the email I don't know 
but it's there. It's just kind of a, a way of, again, this goes into uh, employer-employee relationships and other things. You know, did you read the email I sent you? No. Why? Well, I got the acknowledgement. It says you did. Now you're screwed. So <laughs> that's that's what those two functionalities are are there for. The other thing that an Outlook type program, whether it be Outlook, EM Client, Thunderbird, can do that webmail cannot, or if not, I have not found an add-on or um, an attachment program to do this. Is this delayed delivery? Delayed delivery. You could type up your email now and put it on delayed delivery to send it next week. Kind of nice to do um, if you are a little forgetful, um, even with all the tools I showed you about um, keep and task and calendar, this might be a nice little tool to do. So what you do then is uh, you address it to who you're gonna send it to, you put your subject in, you type up your email, and instead of sending, clicking the send button to send the email, you go into your options and you set delayed reply, or delayed email. <laughs> and it will wait till that date and time and then send the email and it will sit in your outbox and if you're a person who whose outbox drives you nuts when there's messages in it and they won't go um, this might not be an option for you if you can overlook it then it is an option <laughs> and so it's a nice little tool to use like I said in the business world so if you know you're going to be out of the office, but you need to send out a reminder, say you're going on vacation next week, but you need this email to go out next week, um, you can already type up your email, have it scheduled to go out at a particular time, and boom, it goes out, provided your Outlook is running, of course. Um, let's not forget that, or you have it set up for auto send and receive, even when Outlook is not working. Um, you can do that also. Those are settings. Something that... I get asked about all time, all the time. I got one client in particular who asked me this. How do you do emojis in Outlook? Outlook was never really designed for emojis. You can manually do it. Um, and I think I mentioned that earlier in the video, you know, with Gmail, Gmail will let you do emojis. Outlook, unless you type it, and it's the manual type. Uh, let's see, there's the manual type. If you know the manual way to do it, you can put the emojis in. If you don't know the actual key combinations to trigger emojis in Outlook, it's not going to work. There's no button. There's no shortcut. There's nothing. They does have, um, let me find it here, insert, what is it, smart image icons. These are kind of, this is Microsoft's Outlook's version of emojis I guess um, they're just usually just straight up black and white stuff because again Outlook was never designed to do emojis it was you know so you could put these in for example insert there it is and it's not exactly an emoji per se it's an image uh, you know and then you can do your word wrap and so on and so forth you can go back to your message so these are the differences between a webmail based system and an email client. And again, remember an email client is a program that sits on your computer to manage your email, where web based sits in the cloud. Each has their pros and cons. Like I said, with the Gmail, it's everywhere. And if you lose your phone, if you lose your tablet, if your computer dies, your Gmail is still there with all of its information in it. You just have to access it from another device. If your computer dies that you're using Outlook on, nada, it's gone. Uh, unless you're using IMAP protocols, which most of the providers nowadays, whether it be Gmail, I've got my Gmail tied into Outlook, so uh, you know, so the emails are not ever lost. Um, local internet service providers sometimes provide an email account. Most of them have switched over to IMAP, but you're limited on how many emails you can keep. Uh, one in particular is uh, a company up north in Portland. 
they only give you like five megabytes of email space and a couple of other providers I know that do that too. They only give you five megabytes of email space. One good photo poof, completely destroys your email box. So yeah, it, it's nice to have it, but sometimes just a better email service is, is nice. And the nice thing about Gmail, and I can't stress this enough to the younger generation, if you change phones, your email will follow you. You don't need a whole new Gmail account with a new phone and so on and forth with your new phone or your new tablet. You just type in your Gmail information and there it is. It follows you from device to device to computer to computer. Webmail is wonderful like that. Outlook as a program can't do that. The, the other thing that I tell people, like I said, the advantage of Gmail is it's all in the cloud. Uh, the advantage to Outlook, if you need those functionalities, again, like I said, is the return receipts and the read, read receipts. Outlook does have better encryption technology. You can encrypt your emails. I think it's under options. And do, 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 let me find it here. I know they've, it, they've got a specific email encryption and where the other person has to have a key to view the email. Uh, Gmail doesn't have that. You can do it uh, through programs, uh, attachments like PGP, or, yeah, PGP privacy and stuff like that. You can encrypt your emails through Gmail, uh, but it's not. Gmail was never really designed for that, where Outlook was. Uh, like I said, Outlook through the years in the last three or four incarnations has really become more of a business email client. And it works really good with the Microsoft Cloud stuff, and it does work with G Suites and stuff like that, or Gmail. G, C, G Suites is the business side of Gmail. There are certain things Outlook can do that Gmail can't, and then there are things that Gmail can do that Outlook can't. So it really depends on what you need it for, what you want to use it for. Most people that I serve just need basic email. So Gmail, Yahoo, AOL will all serve that function. If you're using it more, like I said, on a business or uh, some type of where you need the additional functionality, any of the email clients will do this. Outlook is the most popular because everyone grew up, uh, for lack of a better word, everyone grew up with Outlook. Outlook started way back long time ago and it just has transitioned through the decades. So Outlook is number one and then Thunderbird for the longest time was number two. Um, and then they stopped doing Thunderbird and then they brought it back. So again, if you need the functionalities of an email client, but you don't have the money, uh, Thunderbird, I think is still a free EM client for business. It's like 50 bucks. Outlook is going to set you back like $129 just for the email client program. Um, if you buy it with the entire office suite package, the full package to get everything you need for a business, depending upon what you need it for, it's going to run you anywhere between $180 to $290, depending on what you need it for. And that's today's money. Tomorrow I might give it away. Tomorrow they might triple the price. It is Microsoft after all. So anyways, that's the, the functionalities and differences between Microsoft Outlook and Gmail. Like I said, I'm a Gmail person. I don't have the need for that type of um, services that Outlook provides, but I do have it there in case on the rare chance that I do lead like a delivery receipt, a read receipt, an acknowledgement that it's gotten to where it needs to go. Um, if I do need the encryption, you know, it's there. Um, but for the most part, general everyday communications with friends, with families, with most clients, I can use Gmail and there's never a problem. So with that, keep that in mind. Um, those are the things to know, uh, kind of important uh, for businesses or, or anyone who's thinking about going into business, um, what you're gonna use your Outlook for or your Gmail for or whatever email you're using. You know, what do you need that email for? Do you need the return receipts? Do you need the delivery or the uh, red receipts? Do you need the scheduled delay? Um, you know, because all emails will do vacation notifications and all emails will do, you know, hey, I'm not here. 
I'll send this back to you as soon as I can. Auto reply, that's what it's called. Couldn't think of what it was for a second. All email accounts will do that. Specialized stuff is where it comes into play. So if you have questions, if you would like my professional opinion, you know, on what you need, if you need it, uh, there's a number down here. Give me a call, 567-855-1274. I'm sure you've seen my email floating around somewhere, computergarageohio at gmail.com. If you want to physically come in and see me, there's my address, and we'll leave it at that. So again, just let me know. Like, share, subscribe if you found this helpful. There's a donation link. Don't forget, you guys have a great day. Talk to you later.